Good morning, Pelham Road. Happy Tuesday to you. Well, you can tell from my cap and my gown, it's graduate week. We're celebrating with our graduates and I'm gonna tell you about another one today, all right? This is Jesse Taylor. Can you see Jesse? All right, that's Jesse Taylor. Jesse's graduating from Riverside High School and she's going to be, be attending the University of South Carolina in Columbia. And she's going to be majoring in, here's my spiel. Okay, we know that all of these kids may change their major several times between now and their next graduation. Yet what is clear is they're going to major in being a highly functioning adult, which is what we can use a lot more of discovering along the way that they are capable and each day growing with confidence and with every encounter being transformed with compassion, their education will be complete when they realize the other, the different, the person who sees things differently than they do are not their enemy, it's their family. And when they comprehend that there's more to life than making money, they will be educated. And when they learn for themselves that the only way to honor God is by living humbly, making the world more just for the least of these and spreading gospel mercy, then they'll be educated. Now to part two of opening our eyes. Yesterday I mentioned a word called D, D-E. D is to reverse. Something is classified, then it is declassified. Its, previously, its previous limitations are, let's say, reversed or removed. To D, our reading of Scripture, is to reverse our process of hearing Scripture. To declassify a document is not to change anything in the document itself, but it is to remove the previous restrictions, the obstacles to truly understanding it. To declassify is to remove this obstacle to see more clearly what is being said. So we are adults. We should be able to read the declassified scripture. So let's begin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We learned that first verse of scripture years ago. When we read this most familiar of scriptures, what do we hear? Likely this was shared with us by most kind children's Bible study teacher, or even possibly a more revered parent. These kind and generous souls emphasize that God sent Jesus to the world for us. They may have gone as far as to personalize the scripture. For God so loved John that he gave his only begotten son. No malice intended, they simply desired for us to recognize how special we are to God. So we first hear that this is about us, about God's love for us. But then another thoughtful soul would like us to understand that God's love is not limited to us, that God loves the world. So what we hear now in the word world are people. The world is made up of people, right? And God loves people. Now to us, most of the people we care about, well, they're just like us. So in my case, what I hear is that God loves the middle-class white man or woman. But if we're lucky enough, we eventually run across some person, an author or a preacher or someone who will tell us that the world is not made up of white middle-class people. And we begin to see that the world God loves is made up of the poor, the rich, the middle-class people who are abled or disabled, people who are African, Hispanic, Asian, Anglo, Irish, Italian, Greeks, Turks, Jews, Muslims, Sheiks, and Christians. So hopefully we have removed a few of our filters to see that while God does still love us, he doesn't love only us. The world is much larger than us. But what if we're still not hearing God completely? What if there's still filters that we need to remove? See, the author of this story, his name is John. And John was a fisherman, an untrained theologian or writer. John, a man who spends his days on the water on a small lake in Palestine. 
John, a man who rises before the sun and walks through the dew-covered fields to prepare his boats for the day, this Jew named John writes the Greek word cosmos. And King Jimmy, King James, and his translators call it the world. It is likely, if we can remove the filters of the English language, that we can hear what this early rising fisherman is saying. God so loved the world. And what was the world to a Jewish fisherman? What was the cosmos that he was thinking of? God loves the water. God loves the dew. God loves the fish. God loves the night sky. God loves that blinking light in the heavens. We would later call that a star. God loves the turtle. God loves the bluebird singing as I mend my nets. God loves the fox. God loves the clean air. God loves the person I pay to clean the fish. God loves the mosquito that buzzes around my head when I'm bringing in the catch. God loves the person I'm selling the catch to. What's John, what John is writing is cosmos, not limited to people like me, not even limited to people, not even limited to animals, not even limited to nature. John is saying God loves what God created. So by removing this one filter, what this writer, what, excuse me, so by removing this one filter that the writer is not a white suburban male preacher, but a brown Jewish rural fisherman writing in Greek, that can actually change what we hear. Maybe the scripture is more about God's relationship with us. Possibly it's about God's love for all of creation. Possibly that's what it's about, is that God loves everything that God made. And if it is, maybe we need to reconsider how we treat all of God's creation. Have a great Tuesday.